Hi there. Now we are at stage 4, which is concerned with creating and validating content when migrating to Power BI. In this stage, we are mainly going to concern about how you can create your content in Power BI or how to validate them. In this video, first we are going to know how to create the production solution, secondly how to validate the solution and thirdly how to document the solution. You would get to know about all these three steps in this video. So please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. The focus of stage 4 is performing the actual work to convert the proof of concept or POC to a production ready solution. The output from this stage is a Power BI solution that has been validated in deployment environment that we are going to deploy into the production environment. Now the very first point comes create the production solution. At this point, the same person who have performed the POC may carry on with the producing the production ready Power BI solution or someone different may be involved. If timelines are not jeopardized, it is great to get people involved who will be responsible for Power BI development in the future. So in this part, while creating the production solution, we have several steps to do. The very first would be to develop new import dataset. In this part, you may choose to create a new import dataset when an existing Power BI dataset doesn't already exist to meet your needs or if it can't be enhanced to meet your needs. Ideally, from the very beginning, consider decoupling the development work for the data and the reports. Now let's move forward and discuss about develop new reports and dashboards. In this part, you have to develop all those new reports and dashboards that even your legacy system doesn't have. These are basically the new requirements that you have to adhere to and have to complete within a specified timeline. Now, before going further, there is one very important tip that you should know that if you have different development test and production environments for your reports, then please consider parameterizing data sources it will make deployment significantly easier. Next, let's discuss about validating the solution. And over here, we have several steps. The very first comes the data accuracy. As a one-time effort during the migration, you will need to ensure the data in the new report matches what's displayed in the legacy report. Or if there is any difference, then you must know how to explain them because Data accuracy is the most critical part of any BI solution. Second comes the security. When validating security, there are two primary aspects to consider. One, data permission. Second, access to data sets, reports, and dashboards. How you can do that? You can do that in multiple ways in Power BI. For example, if you are just using the Power BI desktop application, then you can implement the role level security. Additionally, you can also use object level security or if you are using Azure Analysis Service, then you may implement the security using the roles into your Azure Analysis Service queue. Next comes the functionality. So in terms of functionality, it is the time to double check data set details like the field names, formatting, sorting and default summarization behavior. Interactive report features such as slicers, drill down, drill through, expressions, buttons, bookmarks should also be verified too. Either your developer can do that or you may have separate testers who validate the functionality of the reports and dashboards. So please pay attention on that as well. Lastly, we have to validate the performance, which is the most crucial part of any report. If your report is taking more than 10 seconds to load, that means you have some performance issues. And how to check them? Well, most of the performance issues are coming either because of the DAX formulas that you have used. The DAX query is taking a lot of time, so you have to optimize that. Or maybe you may consider to changing the visuals if you are using the custom visuals from the Microsoft Store. Or maybe it is at your data source level where you have created one data model or inside Power BI you have designed model poorly. So you have to consider all these aspects 
in terms of the performance. Now third part comes where we have to document the solution. There are mainly two types of documentation that are useful for a Power BI solution. The very first comes the data set documentation and the second part comes the report documentation. Documentation can be stored wherever it is most easily accessed by the target audience. Common options that generally we include are a SharePoint within the company site, there can be an app, or we can also store it within individual Power BI desktop files. Now, while creating a dataset documentation, you should remember some of the things such as design decisions made and reasons why. That means your BRD, which is going to depict you what was the reason, what was the purpose, why you are creating it, what's the vision, what's the scope, etc. Then also, you have to mention who owns, maintains, and certified datasets, data refresh requirements, custom business rules defined in datasets. Or maybe it can be specific data set security and data privacy requirement. Additionally, you can also mention over there future maintenance needs and known open issues and deferred backlog items. So all these you should mention during the documentation of the data sets. The report documentation. Report documentation which, which is typically structured as a walkthrough targeted at report consumers that can help consumers to get more value from a report and a dashboard. In this report documentation, you may also include your SOP. Over there, you can mention all the steps how to use that report or maybe you can just create one video within your organization and you can put it over there that is going to depict how to use that report, what are the different parts of the report and how you can analyze using the different functionalities on Power BI services. You may also choose to include additional report documents on hidden page of your report. Generally, we have several bookmarks or the page navigation, but we really don't want to display them. So you can include those in this report documentation too. It could include design decisions and a change log as well. So please don't forget to do the documentation of data sets and reports. Additionally, you may want to do the version controlling as well. The easiest way for version controlling is that you are going to put all your Power BI files onto SharePoint. There, there is automatic version controlling and you can use it. However, there are some organizations, they create their own app and that they are going to use it for the version controlling. Over here, you should note that if you create a site to serve as a hub for Power BI related documentation, please consider customizing the get help menu with the URL location. So that if there's someone who really needs a help, they can just click on that and they can either email or they can read some of the documentation over there. What's next? In the next part, you are going to learn about deploy, spot and monitor. How you can deploy your Power BI reports into Power BI services. What are the different ways that you can spot your end users regarding their issues and how to monitor them. Everything you will get to know in stage 5. For training and consultation, please don't forget to visit our website that is www.biconsultingpro.com and if you have any concern or any issues, please connect with us at connect at biconsultingpro.com. You can also follow us on our different social media platforms and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.